Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to get my free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this is a review of the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter f 2.8 for the Sony E mount cameras. Now this is the little brother to the 28 to 75 2.8 that Tamron put out about a year ago. So I took this lens out to the Philadelphia Museum of Art to photograph the stairs again where Rocky ran up. Now there was one of those fake Rocky Balboa guys and you'll see him a little later when we go through the pictures. And don't forget you can download sample raw files over on the website. So on top of going to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, I also went out to lunch at a place called Park in Philly where I just took some pictures making it feel like I was in Paris because Park is a French restaurant. So I used two different cameras during this review. I used the A9 at the Philadelphia Museum of Art as well as the A7 III over at Park, which is in Rittenhouse Square in Philly. So let's take a look at the physical aspects and attributes of this lens. The first thing that you notice is it's yeah, it's not very heavy at 0.92 of a pound or 420 grams. This is a super dainty and super light lens. There are no buttons, there's no IBIS, there's no switches. There's basically nothing other than a zoom ring, which is all internal, which is nice, as well as your focus ring, which is back here. You have a 67 millimeter filter thread on the front of this lens, and that is what the lens cap is as well, and this, is your lens hood. Now, I consider this range 17 to 28 not to be one of the best ranges out there ever. I prefer a 14 to 24 or maybe even a 16 to 35. Now, Sony makes a 16 to 35 that is $2,200 for their 2.8 lens. This isn't $2,200, this is $899. So like I said, it pairs well with the 28 to 75 because you go from 17 to 28 and then 28 to 75 all the way through, it's a 2.8. Personally, I would wanna go a little wider. You've got 14 to 24, which is this Sigma down here that I'm holding on to. But the difference is this 14 to 24 2.8 Sigma is around $1,400. So it's more expensive than the $900, but personally, if I could afford it, I'd be leaning my way to get something a little wider because if you have the 28 to 75, that would pair well with something like a 14 to 24. So the way that I look at this 17 to 28 2.8 is that this is kind of like a entry level kit lens 2.8. Now I know it's still expensive at $899, but you're not gonna find another 2.8 that gives you the same thing that this is gonna give you, especially for that price on this full frame Sony camera or on any full frame Sony camera. So I like to call it an entry level lens based off of the price, but also based off of the build quality. It's not exactly the best feeling lens in the world. That doesn't mean you can't get good results from it. And with that being said, let's jump into the images right here, starting at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So this first image is set up on a tripod shooting with the Sony A9. I'm at one two thousandth of a second at 2.8 ISO 100. This is an edited RAW file. You can download the sample RAW file for yourself to take a look at it. But look, we've got fake Rocky right here. He's looking, he's looking good. He's looking nice and sharp. Look, this fake Rocky guy decides to park himself right in front of where I'm set up. And I was set up first. I was like, yo, yo, fake Rocky guy. The fuck out of here. And he's like, what? I'm like, that's right. And then actually say that, I was like, this guy, I'm just gonna put him in my pictures because he's in front of me and we're in a public place, but whatever. So he's there, he's just talking to people, trying to get some money. If we zoom in here on the left-hand side of the image, it looks perfectly fine at 2.8. If we zoom in here on the back of the image at the on, on the art museum, that looks perfectly fine as well. So I, it just, you see a little bit of bowing from the stairs. You can see that down there that you've got some bowing at 17 millimeters. Look, it's it's fine. 
you're going to get the job done with this lens. You don't have to get super technical and be like, well, the Boeing is a little bit more prevalent and it would have liked to have seen it if it was on this other lens. You're still going to see it on other lenses as well. And they have lens correction built into Lightroom if you just don't like it. I really don't care. It looks fine to me. You got to take it into perspective that it's a it's a $899 2.8 and it's one of the only options for Sony that you can get that is going to do that. Moving on to the next image, we are now at f22, 1 30th of a second uh, at 17 millimeters. So now we're f22 in it. Everything looks perfectly fine to me across this image. Like I said, you can go download them and, and see for yourself whether you like it or don't. I'm just here to supply you with sample images and tell you what I think about it. This is an indoor shot at the factory. This is one of our studios over here. Just to show you what 17 millimeters will get you in a real world situation. The colors, the tones, things look fine. This was on the A7 III and everything looks good to me right there. Now this is where I took it out into uh, writ to Rittenhouse Square at a place called Park. So this is a restaurant. We actually photographed the, we actually used the Leica camera here for one of our five minute portraits. But this is just to give you a look at what it's gonna look like with your shaded area, as well as your sunny area, which is really more the, the, the camera is taking care of this, the dynamic range of it. But everything here looks fine. We're at 2.8, it's a pretty, snapshot it really is but it's getting the job done the colors look saturated the colors look pumpy it looks nice and sharp i'm not sure what else you could ask for this is just a basic in the park picture as you zoom in on this statue um it is sharp. I don't think if you had a 16 to 35 and you put it next to this and they were both at 17 millimeters that you would be able to tell the difference side by side i think you would just be like okay they look fairly similar. Let me jump in here real quick and say the images that you're seeing on the screen right now were edited using FroPak One. If you'd like to check out FroPak One, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash presets because over there you can play with the sliders to see the befores and afters and see what they're doing. If you'd like to pick them up, they are currently on sale for 40% off, so go ahead and take advantage of that. And now let's get back to the video. Moving on to the next image, just wanted to give you some pictures of nice flowers in the park and show you how the background is gonna look. What are we zoomed in on this? We're at 28 millimeters on this image. Now, in terms of autofocus, it focused fine. I, I, it's not like I was shooting super fast subjects moving, but even if I was, it would still hold up because the a7 III has very good continuous autofocus and I don't think you're gonna have a problem with this lens. It's hard to say and compare it to a 16 to 35 2.8, that's $2,200 when this is 900 bucks and the people that are buying this can't afford the other lens because it's more expensive, but they have a full frame camera. This is, like I said, one of the only options that you can get that's affordable and a 2.8 for a full frame camera. Moving on to the next shot, this is a close focus shot, just showing you how close you can get to the subject. In this case, it's a, it's a frog statue that it looks like somebody decided to take some chalk to it to give it some different color lips. Uh, they went to town, it now has a pink eye. Not the, not the good pink eye, like the bad pink eye, the, you know, the conjunctivitis, is that what they call it? Something like that. Now, this is one that people always are like, take a picture of the fringing, how's the fringing? Well, here I shot up into the sky, to see how the fringing looks. I don't see any purple fringing. Nope, still not seeing any purple fringing. What I am seeing though, a little bit near the outsides of the frame is that it's not as sharp edge to edge as some of the native glass that you might see. Like we see on the Nikon Z side with any of their Z lenses, it's, it's sharp edge to edge. I'm not seeing that sharpness here as much, especially in the corners. It looks like it falls off just a little bit. I don't really care too much about the corners for the most part. If the main section of the of the image is gonna be nice and sharp, again, you have to take it that this is a budget, we'll say budget $900, and a value option that if it gets the job done and it gets you into a 2.8 lens, then you're gonna be pretty good to go. We got a couple more images here. This is where I was sitting at Park having lunch. This is a bread basket with bread, and I love bread, and I love butter, and I don't eat it too often, but when I do, I eat it. I mean, that made sense, right? When I do, I eat it. Oh man, I love this bread. So let's zoom in on the bread. Bread looks good, looks sharp. Seriously, look at that bread right there. You can see the you can see the the cinnamon or the the raisins in that bread. I, I went with a super slow shutter speed to get the background blurring as people walked by. I mean, let me just look at the edges. 
Ah, I mean, you can't really tell much on the edges whether it's sharp or not because it's just not the main focus, so it looks fine. Moving on to the last image, this was part of my lunch. This was a crab salad with avocado. There's some radishes in there, there's some frizzy, which why, by the way, frizzy is the worst lettuce you could ever think of. Do not put frizzy anywhere, because it's horrible, except on my head, because I like frizzy hair. You can see the salmon out of focus here in the background. Sharpness right here in the middle for the close focus. It almost gives you a macro perception right there. That looks perfectly fine. The colors are fine, it was an overcast day. And all in all, it, it gets the job done. If that's what you're looking for is a lens that gets the job done, this lens is going to do it. Now, if you are full frame on the Sony and you are looking to get two lenses to start, a 17 to 28 and then a 28 to 75, the 28 to 75 is 879. The first lens I mentioned is 899. You're gonna be spending $1,778 for two lenses that go from 17 to 75 and give you a 2.8 versus spending $2,200 for a 16 to 35 2.8 and $2,200 for a 24 to 70. 72.8 from Sony. So you can see the difference in price. Will you see a major difference in image quality? Probably a little bit. Will you see a major difference in build quality? Yeah, absolutely, because this does not feel like the best built, most sturdy lens in the world. But if you're looking for a wide angle that's kind of affordable in comparison to everything else, this isn't a bad way to go. Now, let me sniff it. Ha ha ha! Smells like a croissant! Mwah! Croissant! A French croissant! You know, I went to Paris, I didn't eat any croissants. No croissants got eaten in Paris. Let's try the wind tunnel test. I'm worried about this one. I'm, I'm actually gonna put a safety right here. <sighs> Did you see how far it moved? It was almost like a Category 5 hurricane just blew this! It wasn't, because I don't blow at Category 5, I only blow at a Category 1. And this lens is pretty light. So be careful with that right there. So like I said, if you'd like to download the sample raw files, you can do that over on the website. The link is up on the screen. Let me know what you think down below. Leave some comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.